Hi, and welcome to another Rule of Carnage uh, model review video. Um, so a little while ago, I featured um, Halcyon Miniatures on the Kickstarter Roundup, and they were good enough to send through a set of their Isopod Cavalry to the channel, which um, I used in putting together my Hobgoblin demo table. I'll put a link to, uh, to that video in the description below. Um, but I thought I'd sort of talk through the features of the minis, how they were to put together and paint. Um, so first of all, we'll start off with the... So uh, these are... The reason I really love them, the reason I think they're really great, is that they're such unusual and character-packed um, minis. Um, I like anything that's sort of peculiar and different and, and sort of not in the normal run of things. Um, ultimately, there are so many places you can get, like, your standard warriors um, that it's difficult to sort of recommend one over the other, and often it's personal choice. But when you get something really peculiar, really sort of out of the norm, then I can say, okay, well, you've got to go to these guys for this because you're, you're not going to see it anywhere else. Um, so the actual isopod cavalry, basically they're sort of... Um, enormous um, bugs, is <laughs> isopods, um, so sort of like uh, large millipedes with a sort of fleshy underside. So the bugs themselves are super cool, uh, full of character. Um, and then within the kits there are a range of different riders. So I assembled them with the sort of um, the nobleman and retinue. Um, but there's a set of uh, armoured knights available, and those armoured knights come with lances or um, uh, sort of tank buster um, heads on their on their lances. Um, so you could totally assemble these in a whole bunch of different ways. They could be sort of command for a for a unit. Each of them could happily be a character within. Uh, a, a cavalry unit they could be their own war band um they could be sort of something for a really weird little independent thing um so i'm thinking of using them as sort of um characters uh, a retinue on a on a weird sort of hunting party just for a, a fun little sort of personal scenario project um equally you could obviously have them in sort of dead straight fantasy with the with the lances or they would work absolutely brilliantly for any of the sort of weird um, alternative history versions. I think the sort of the tank busters particularly uh, would be super great for something like uh, Sludge or, or any of those sort of like uh, weird dark um, alternative versions of sort of uh, of the Great Wars. Um, so uh, after that sort of general overview uh, we'll move on to how they were to uh, sort of assemble and put together and handle. Uh, so we'll move on to the So uh, the riders uh, were all uh, metal miniatures, the nobles are single piece metal um, and the, uh, the, the isopods themselves, the bugs, are um, uh, cast uh, resin. Um, so basically with the, the, the retinue and the bugs, so that, that's a two piece um, assembly job. Um, a little bit of clean up on the underneath of the bugs, unsurprisingly, quite a sort of um, large sort of resin area, and that's obviously where the the, the mould goes, uh, I, I, th I should think it's gone into the, the, the minis. Um, but that meant that the, the sort of the the upper side, the business side of the bugs, um, had virtually no clean up. I think I did a little bit of sort of um, basic mould line checking. Um, and uh, the, the metal minis um, were, were lovely, I don't think I saw hardly any flash on them at all. So, um, you know, nice uh, sort of uh, moulds, easy to put together. Um, a little bit of sort of, I think maybe the riders had, you could use them on uh, like normal horses and normal cavalry. Um, so there there was a little bit of sort of um, easing to get the legs across because obviously the, the isopods are rather large um, around the thigh area for their riders uh, so there's a little bit of sort of uh, tweaking and fiddling to get them to sit nicely but nothing that's beyond any kind of sort of uh, you know reasonable minis modeler um, so they were very nice very easy to assemble the um, the the armored knights obviously I've you know is the same situation um, so the lances are sort of um, 
couched upright so there is a little bit of sort of modeling and certainly if you want to sort of go from the lance um to the sort of the tank breaker um lance version you might need to do a weeny bit of pinning just because of the uh the lance um the 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 explosive for the tank busters are quite sort of thick on one end but again you know i think to be honest if you're going for something quite sort of quirky and weird and and kit bashy and ink 28 and alternative sort of history as these minis are there's nothing like a, a challenging level of uh modeling or kit bashing or converting um really easy to put together um generally and sort of fun i think the thing that you have to remember about minis like this is that they're, they're genuinely enjoyable um hobby pieces to engage with um i think if you're picking up things like this you're sort of interested in kit bashing i love kit bashing i love the sort of fiddling about and trying to see something new and unusual um in the model and i think if you have that mindset these aren't hard to put together by any stretch of the imagination but if you have a, a a kit bash mindset the little sort of bits where you have to tweak and you know um squeeze and, and wriggle around and find the fit are exactly the fun bits of hobby uh for, for assembling so i think lo lovely to assemble really good fun um really nice to sort of look at them and try and figure out what you want to do with them and, and, and how you want to put them together um you know lovely high-end molding going on um you know great materials you know really really good to put together um, so moving on from the physical assembly side of things, um, it's time to talk about the So when I was doing the uh, Hobgoblin table, I set myself the rather rash challenge of trying to do it in 48 hours, which was never going to happen, but it was, it was a nice idea to reach for. One of the main reasons I didn't make those 48 hours is that um, I spent a bit longer painting the isopod cavalry. Not because they were on any level difficult to paint. Um, these are clearly sort of um, physical sort of original sculpts. And so everything that's in there is very reachable. There's not even sort of... Um, I didn't even know, need to go sort of um, to, to a thin brush to get round bits or, or behind pieces. Everything sort of laid out there and right on the, on the mini. I wanted to put a bit more time into painting them. Um, there's there's that sort of level of, of detail and feature on the models. It, they're, they're one of these um, those models where you pick them up, you've undercoated them, you've done a base coat, and then you see another detail and another detail. And as you're every sort of stage of painting, you spot another little sort of, oh, look, he's got a something, something there. Oh, look, there's a little spike. Oh, oh there's a little pouch here. There's a little, well, I'll have to pick that out. And oh, look, that's where the saddle's strapped into the, you know. So loads and loads of detail uh, on the minis, but not sort of tiny, itty bitty detail that's kind of you know um a, a sort of a, a strain to to get to and to spot just like there's so much story on the miniatures there's so much sort of feature and and, and things to pick out and, and dig down into and and create a little tale for uh, a little story for and you just keep finding things as you're painting and want to put another layer into the uh, into the mini into your into your paint job so there's sort of detail in a in a large scale if it is as, as it were there's sort of um sort of these minis um these characters are sort of they feel they're lived in they feel like they're actually in the world that you might be creating for them they exist within that space which are all things i personally absolutely love about minis painting them was was just an absolute pleasure an absolute joy the the isopods themselves because of the shells there's a lovely smooth run um sort of for for painting so it's just one of those pieces that sort of has a level of detail there but gives you a, a sort of a large enough canvas as it were to have a little bit of fun and and try something out and and, and sort of muck around a bit um the sort of the 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 bugs themselves the undersides the the, the fleshy sort of um parts of them ha had a lovely sort of 
almost fungoid uh, feel to them. I think you could really have a lot of fun here. Um, certainly if you're doing something nerdly adjacent and you enjoy that sort of gribbliness to your to your minis, I think you'd really sort of quite enjoy getting in there in, into the bugs themselves. The riders, as again, I used the sort of the retinue uh, version of the riders. Everyone, each of each of those guys feels like they have a little story to them, a, a little sort of place within the retinue, um, a, 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 a job, a position, a, a relationship to the other ones. If I hadn't have chosen to sort of put them onto the isopods and I'd gone with the knights with the lances or the uh, or the tank busters, I would be using that retinue sort of mounted on horses or, or something. Because again, they're just absolutely using character they're everything that you want from a from a command from a narrative group absolutely delightful and again lovely to paint loads of detail there's a a, a guy with a spy glass so you've got a little bit of glass you can have a bit of fun with putting a, a sort of a little bit of a reflection effect in there's the the guy with a falcon which allows you to sort of do a little bit of a, an animal piece in there uh, a lovely cloak on one of the riders. Absolutely, just lots of little sort of bits where you go. Oh, I can I can do another bit of a technique here. I've got armor and fabric. I've got a, a, a sort of a, a feathered creature as well as these sort of large bug creatures. Just stuff where you can go in as deep as you want into sort of mucking about with your painting options, or you can go sort of quite uh large on on your sort of options and techniques really enjoyable to paint um as i say these women is i chose to spend a bit longer with and sort of mess up my own challenge in doing it but that's because they sort of they have that painting inspiration to them inherently um so I obviously, yes, I would strongly recommend uh, stopping by uh, Halcyon Miniatures. I'll put a, a link in the description. I would strongly suggest picking these guys up. If you enjoy interesting minis, if you enjoy minis that have a story to them, if you enjoy minis that are out of the ordinary and unusual and that you can't pick up sort of everywhere, if you like having units that, that stand out on the tabletop as being genuinely unique and have a little story to them. Certainly if you're anywhere in the ballpark of sort of an Ink 28 uh, or a sort of alternative history uh, sort of kit basher type hobbyist, absolutely get in there check out halcyon definitely check out the isopod I, I recommend them as being you know lovely to put together lovely to kit bash and muck about with and, and great fun to paint um they have a range obviously halcyon have other minis that have this same sort of detailed sort of gritty feel to them um you know i featured um projects since uh on, on the channel and every time they do anything it always has that sort of that heart and that passion um that sort of feel of of wanting to get right in there on on the hobby and so yeah i think definitely if you are a, a fan of kit bashing if you are the fan of a sort of a, a, a sort of grounded sort of deep down story for your minis if you are a fan of them existing within the world and having their own story and their own narrative to them get by halcyon check them out um you know pick up these minis i i absolutely love the isopod cavalry they're lovely they feel good in the <laughs> they feel good in the hand they feel nice to pick up and nice to use on the tabletop um they were great to paint um simple to assemble and they absolutely are, are packed with and tell their own story as you're modeling them as you're painting them and as you're playing with them and i can't think of a higher recommendation for uh, a mini than that so yeah absolutely lovely stuff definitely check them out okay uh so from this uh model review from rule of carnage it's gonna be uh thank you and goodbye so bye bye bye